Good evening people and welcome to this week's Cooking on the Corsican. You find us here on our mooring. It's Friday night. It's the 24th of January, February, March. And it's not a bad evening. We have got the fire lit on the go. And this week's vlog is chili con carne. Now again, as a request, and excuse me because I'm sitting a mint. And this is my own version of chilli con carne and it's a chilli con carne just lifted to the next level. To be honest with you, when I was a young man, I used to have a group of friends and we used to have this competition, who could make the best chilli? And we used to put all these mad ingredients in it and try and make these fantastic chillies. But I'll tell you, over the years of cooking, experience has taught me that less is more often more. And I've developed this recipe over a lot, a lot of years, and it's absolutely delicious. Please give it a go. It isn't really that complicated. There looks as if there's a lot of stuff here, but when I get on with it and show you how it's done, it really isn't that difficult. Now I'm going to get started because it's quite a, quite a bit to do. I'm going to start off with a little bit of olive oil. If I can get the lid off it. <clears throat> And I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in this pan, which is hot. Okay. And the first thing I'm actually going to do, believe it or not, is I'm going to do my peppers first. And the reason for that is, is because this cooks for quite a long time, this chilli, I want to just get these, these blanched off in olive oil and I'll take them out. And then I'll get my meat and everything browned. And then right at the very end, I'll put these chilies back in just for five minutes or so. I saw when people get a portion of chilli, a portion of the chilli, they're actually getting the flavour of the peppers. Because cooking away for a couple of hours, these would cook away into nothing. And you wouldn't even know they were in there. And I'll be honest with you, these are absolutely delicious. See, as a vegetable, just red, green... All colours of peppers just chopped up and, and uh, sweated off in olive oil. I mean, all the butter and some salt and pepper. I'll tell you, it makes a lovely vegetable. It really does. People don't eat enough peppers. They really are delicious. If they're, if they're lovely and fresh, they're, they're, a, they're a, fantastic, uh, a fantastic thing, raw or cooked. So it's been a fairly interesting week. I'd like to thank all the new subscribers, we're now up to <coughs> I think nearly 90 subscribers now I know that's nothing in comparison to some other people's channels but we are so happy that people are subscribing every, every week and I'm getting a lot of feedback from the vlogs and people are thoroughly enjoying them so listen, thanks very much to everybody who subscribed and if you haven't subscribed already and you watch these vlogs, come on get down and get subscribed to this channel because then when videos come out you'll know because you'll get an email telling you that I've put another vlog up, okay? So get down there and subscribe to this channel. Help us grow cooking on the Corsican. So as I say, I'm just going to sweat these off. Now while we're just doing, I'll just get Steve to come to this beef that I'm going to use. Notice I am not using mince. I am using shin of beef. And as you can see how lovely and red that is, that came from my butcher. Very good quality, it's a cheap cut, it takes long slow cooking. But as you can see, look at the lovely grains of fat that are through it. Because any meat like that, when you give it a long slow cook, you get a lovely gelatinous uh, a stew, it gives it a lovely gelatinous texture. And that's what I'm trying to achieve in this chilli. I never do a chilli with mince, I always do it either with chopped beef and I always chop my beef up to about that kind of size or I use a cut of pork that uh, is, is a similar cut to this and I sometimes do a pork chilli Now if you are a vegetarian there's no reason why you can't do this recipe and substitute the meat with some other ingredient that, that uh, you wish to use um, you could use uh, lots of different kinds of mushrooms, um, you could even use tofu, you could use um, 
uh, what's that, uh, corn stuff, you could use that. There's lots and lots of things that uh, you could use. Now these have, these have cooked enough, because they are going to get dropped in at the end just for 10 minutes. And then whip them out. My pan's lovely and hot. This is our new little cooker, which is only the second time it's been used. As we're here tonight, we've got electricity, so we're plugged into the mains. We are wired for sound. Yeah, and I hope you've all had a good week, people. People that are watching, the viewers, hope you've all had a good week. We have been quite, uh, been quite busy getting uh, everything ready for the vlog. I always get to a stage, you know, where I um, I think, oh my god, what am I going to cook? What am I going to cook? And there's always somebody, there's always somebody who uh, who crops up and goes, Jeff, can you do such and such? And this was, uh, I can't even remember the chap's name, and I'm very, very sorry that I can't even remember your name, but uh, it was a chap off the Norfolk Broads Forum who requested this. So I'm now going to start, I'm now going to start browning this meat off, and I may have to do it in batches, but I'll show you how to do it. Let's get some in at first. And what we won't do is we won't overload the pan. I might have to do this in two or three batches. But what I'll do is I'll get the first batch started off, show you what I'm doing, and then I'll do it all and I'll come back to you. Okay, that's enough to be starting off with. You don't want to overcrowd the pan because what will happen is if you don't leave any space. The meat will stew rather than brown and we want it to develop some colour so we, we don't want to overload the pan we don't want it to stew so I'm trying to think if there was anything from last week that I forgot I hope everybody enjoyed the steak and pepper sauce it certainly had plenty of views I think uh, in the first two days I had it over 200 views which is really 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 fantastic I'm really pleased really pleased with how the channel's gone and please keep putting the, the requests in we don't mind I've got a lot of requests so people who have requested something you know that will come up don't think oh he's forgot about me I haven't forgot about anybody everybody I've answered everybody's queries everybody's emails have all been answered I haven't left anybody out if I have left you out well I'm very sorry write back to me again if I've left you out and give me a nudge and I'll, I'll write back to you again but I try to answer every single question that I get and sometimes I can tell you that it takes me quite a long time I can spend up to two hours a day sometimes answering different inquiries and bits and pieces but keep them coming keep your requests coming we're more than happy to to answer any questions or queries so I am just going to keep this moving about and browning it off and as I say, I'm probably going to have to do it in three batches. But I'll get this first batch browned off a bit and show you, and then I'll take a bit of a pause. I'll do the rest of it, and then when the meat's all browned off, I'll come back to you, and I'll show you how the chilli builds up. It really is a nice recipe. Give it a go. It's uh, much much nicer than, uh, than Dundee Mints. Much nicer. It really is. And as I say, I'm giving away my secret chilli recipe. I shouldn't have been in that, you know. I shouldn't have been in that. I'm, should be. I'm mad. I'm absolutely mad. Another thing I meant to tell you, that Mary Berry, by the way. She's a fly one, huh? The last three weeks, every time I've went to do something, I've turned the telly on, and there's that Mary Berry doing my recipe. Or a similar recipe. Nowhere near as good, I might add. But she's buggered me up two weeks in a row. But lo and behold, I turned the telly on a Monday night and Berry Berry is doing steak and a peppercorn sauce. And I thought, do you know what? You never got that one out before me, Mary. 
So let's hope this week she's doing a chilli and I'll have beat her this week as well. <laughs> now she's a lovely woman Mary Berry. She's uh, probably one of the first cooks that I ever remember uh, from the TV. As a little boy she's probably one of the first cooks that I ever watched. <coughs> then there was a galloping gourmet for those of you out there who can remember the galloping gourmet. And then I think it was old Delia. Don't want to say too much about Delia because she lives very close to us. She can do the right good hiding. Especially if she's been at the football and she's full of drink. Because <laughs> we know what she's like when she's full of drink. You've all seen her on the telly. She goes mental. It's a shame this little pan just wasn't a bit warmer. Steve just panning in to show you that. And while that's thinking away, I'll just tell you some of the ingredients we've got here, Steve. So you can come to this bowl. In this bowl here, we've got uh, two green chilies, bird's eye, two red bird's eye chopped up with the seeds, got three sticks of celery, and I've got um, I've got half a bulb. Sounds like a lot, but isn't it? Half a bulb of Imagine Padgett's favourite garlic. Don't need to put it in Imagine Padgett. We don't want it make the chilli without the garlic, it won't make too much of a difference. And here I've got my usual mix of one big large white onion, three little red onions. Now normally in a, in a chilli I put in some paprika to give it a little bit of depth, but what I had in the fridge is I had some terrazzo sausage here. So I thought well rather than using the paprika this week, I'll use the terrazzo sausage and that'll give me the lovely terrazzo sausage, plus it'll give me that paprika depth in the in the chili. I've got uh, a teaspoonful of salt and half a teaspoonful of black pepper and I've got um, two teaspoonfuls of oregano I've got um, four teaspoons of cumin and I've got half a teaspoonful of cayenne and I've got some of this stuff here this is chipotle paste made from the chipotle pepper and this really does take the chili to uh, to another level. So there you go. So listen, this is browned as much as I want it to be. I am going to take a break there. I'll get the rest of the meat browned off. And when that's done, I'll come back to you and we'll build the chilli up. So come back and see us. We'll be about 10 or 15 minutes. Thanks very much for watching. So welcome back, good people. Meat's all browned off, so we're going to get right on with it. Next thing, I'm using no more oil at all whatsoever. Red onion and white onion into the pan with the meat juices and a little bit of oil that we used. And the oil that we used, by the way, was only about two, uh, two uh, dessert spoonfuls. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a lot of oil at all. And as I always tell you, when you're doing onions, this is at the stage where I add the salt and pepper. Okay. And it's just a shame this little pan, this little stove, it doesn't really get uh, it doesn't really get as warm uh, as I would like it to get. So I'm going to leave them. They go in right at the very end. That was our peppers. But I will just add the the garlic and the, what do you call it, the garlic, the um, celery, <coughs> and the two green and the two red chilies. So that's that. And I'll also add my oregano, which was two teaspoonfuls of oregano. And that was to two pounds of of beef. So if you just wanted to make a pound, just half it to one teaspoonful. I shall add my cumin. Again, that's about three and a half teaspoonfuls, four teaspoonfuls. If you're not only want to make a pound, cut it down to two. And I'll use half a teaspoonful of cayenne. And I'll tell you the reason I'm using half a teaspoonful of cayenne, will I? 
I would have used a whole teaspoonful, but I only had half a teaspoonful left. So there you go. And I shall also add at this stage my terrazzo. So there you go. So that's everything in. I shall get it moving around. Yeah, this little ring, it's no, not as hot as I would like it to be. But, we are cooking on a boat. <coughs> And half of the half of the thing of this vlog is is what you can achieve cooking on a boat. So we shall make do with what we've got. Now I'm not going to put my tomato puree and my chipotle paste in at the moment. I'm going to wait till the onions have sweated down a little bit and then I'll put the meat and everything back in <coughs> and I shall then add my I, I might actually add it just before I put the meat back in so I can mix it through and then I shall put all the meat back in I'll put some chicken stock in I've got two tins of tomatoes here I don't know whether I'll use both of them I never quite know until I start putting something together exactly how much tomatoes and stuff I'm going to put in it and normally when I make this, I make quite a big batch at home because I, I put it in the freezer. I never just cook, I never just cook a chilli for a couple of people. If I'm making anything like that at home, curry, chilli, egg, I'm sure I've told you before, I make big batches of everything. And you know, whoever's there eating, whatever's left, it goes in the plastic Chinese containers and it goes in the, the freezer. And you can buy those containers in the supermarket now, they're fairly cheap. I think you can get about 25 of them for a couple of quid. And they're brilliant, they take a, a nice portion and you can just stack them up nicely in your freezer. So that's exactly what I do. You know, and I can go in the freezer at any time and I've got chilies in there, curries, homemade soups, um, oh, you name it. <coughs> you know, all sorts of stuff, bangers and, uh, bangers and onion gravy and um, stews and um, oh, all sorts of things. <coughs> Sometimes I actually forget to label them and uh, I forget, I, I sometimes forget what's in them and uh, I, I just go in and it's, um, you know, it's a bit like a potluck. I take one out and I think, right, whatever is in there, that is my dinner tomorrow and it's just a guess. So when I get up in the morning and it's defrosted, it's a bit of a surprise. I did do that and get up one morning, do you know what I had for my dinner? A tub of gravy. So that wasn't too good. <laughs> <laughs> hence the reason you should uh, hence the reason you should always um, you should always uh, label the, the containers <coughs> I've got this pan on absolutely full pail can you believe it that's just it's just got no guts at all My little uh, gas cooker that everybody complained about, um, which is why I bought this, is because nobody liked the little portable gas stove that I was using. And I bought this to keep people happy, but I'll be honest with you, I would much rather use a little portable cooker. Uh, you know, I've had it for, I don't know how many years. I had it for about at least seven years and never had any problems with it. And, uh, in actual fact, I went to use it a couple of weeks ago and I was a bit ham-fisted and I broke the one that I did for about seven years but I did buy a new one, so I actually have got a new one God There are some beautiful smells coming out of here Right, I shall put my tomato paste in because tomato paste likes to cook out a little bit and I always judge it by putting it on my spoon like this look 
So I put it on my spoon, my wooden spoon. And I know now that is about a good a good tablespoon of tomato puree. Everything's fingers and thumbs today. I don't know what's the matter with me today. I can't screw the lid back on the tomato puree. I can't do anything right today. It's one of those days. So that's the tomato puree. I shall start mixing that in, in the middle. <coughs> Always people when you put tomato puree in any dish, try and just fry it out a little bit. It's always good for it. So as I say, this isn't developing as much heat as I would like it to develop, but we're getting there. And I'm sure Steve will agree, there are some wonderful oh, smells. Yeah. yeah, it smells lovely. You know, we are having some wonderful smells here. I would just be a lot happier if this pan would just be a little bit more on the ferocious side. But hey ho, right now the chipotle paste people, this is a fresh jar. And remember I've already put four chilies in here and half a teaspoonful of cayenne to two pound of meat. But I am going to have about two nice big teaspoonfuls of this chipotle paste and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of a taste do you know what that is? That is quite hot, but do you know what? I reckon I could have another teaspoonful of that. So there you are people, I've had three big teaspoonfuls of the chipotle paste. I'll put the lid back on it and I shall wipe it a bit later on. We'll give it a mix through it. that. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I get the first lot of my meat, get it in. There we go. Get that stirred around. fell on the floor but the dog will get that <clears throat> that'll be his treat he's kicking about here somewhere I don't know where he is he's normally he's normally at my feet when I'm cooking oh look at him god bless him he's down there snoring his head off He's not overly impressed with me at the moment, the dog, because um, <coughs> for the last week I have been working on his coat and getting the winter coat out of him with the old furminator. If you don't know what a furminator is and you're a dog owner, put into, uh, put into Google furminator and they do them for all types of dogs, small dogs, large dogs, short haired dogs long haired dogs and I'll tell you I've been a dog owner most of my life but I've been a guide dog owner 25 years and it is the best thing I've ever come across for grooming your dog 
but it really does strip the hair right back so I tend to only use it in the, the summertime because my dog's out a lot in, in, in the winter we're out every weekend so I tend to uh, just brush them with my own brush in the winter and in the summer I use the old Furminator and it's absolutely amazing Right, okay, next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to judge how much tomatoes I'm going to need and these are just ordinary old chopped tomatoes so I'm going to put a can of them in okay and then I'm going to use a little bit of my chicken stock just to clean this can okay because there's always excess tomatoes in the can but look what that does there's a little trick for you, you're no wasting any of your tomatoes because you know me and waste I hate wasting anything now yes I reckon I am going to need a second can of tomatoes I did think I would, that's why I had two here so we'll get these opened ok, and we'll pop these in and I shall do exactly the same trick a little bit of my chicken stock, which is part of this recipe by the way just to give the old can a clean out and there you go and there's the lid off that one and I'm sure you'll agree all the beautiful things that have gone in here you can tell that this is going to be delicious it's absolutely going to be fantastic I shall mix it ok I don't know what happened there with this light little glitch but I'm back with you and uh, I'm just going to give this a mix and add 500ml of chicken stock And do you know what? I'm just going to use the whole 500 ml. So there you are. That's the 500 ml of chicken stock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow this to come to the boil, and I'm going to put a lid on it, and I'm going to cook it down for approximately two hours. And then after two hours, I'll come back with you. I'll add the beans, show you the finishing off, and. Uh, all, when it's all come together so if you have been thanks for watching and I'll see you in two hours okay people welcome back an hour and a half exactly has gone by and we've transferred the the chili into a larger pot because we've still got the beans and the peppers to put in so there's the chili there it's absolutely beautiful, we've tasted it and it's absolutely perfect for seasoning and everything now I'm not going to use kidney beans I'm going to use cannellini beans ok and that's two cans of cannellini beans and our peppers from earlier on that we just sauteed in olive oil so there you go And we now mix all that through. And really just give it 10 minutes more cooking. And it's actually done. So let me just stir it up. Now, the thing about beans is, anytime you make a chilli, people go, I don't like kidney beans. I like baked beans but what people don't actually realise is baked beans and kidney beans taste exactly the same they're from the same family, they're from, they're from the haricot family if you were to take a baked bean and wash the tomato sauce off it and take a kidney bean and wash it and take the husk off it and taste the two of them they taste absolutely identical but anyway these are a nice little bean, little Italian bean, the cannellini bean and they just give the, the, the chilli some a, a different depth really 
So there you go, people. That is my take on a chili con carne. And believe you me, that is absolutely delicious. You'll thoroughly enjoy it. If you take the time to make it, it's really not as difficult as it looks. It's quite simple to, to make. And I'll tell you, once you've made it, I say it all the time, but you'll make it again and again and again. So, people, if you enjoyed the vlog, once again, go down below, subscribe to the channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. I never remember to say it, but I now leave links in the description to all the Norfolk Broads forums. There's two Broads forums. The links are down below to get to them. There's lots of information in, the, in these uh, forums, all about things to do with Norfolk Broads. Our Facebook page link is down there. Our Instagram, we're on Instagram now as well. It's there as well. So all the links are down below. So thanks ever so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever you think. But anyway, if you have been, thanks ever so much for watching and we'll see you in next week's vlog. Bye bye for now.